Hi, everyone. Welcome to Latin American Directions. My name is Nicholas Sussman, and we have an old friend of the house to discuss a very interesting topic. Today, we have Alvaro Salgado. Alvaro is a lawyer and currently is the public affairs lead from Fluid, a consultancy in communi strategic communications, public relationships, and design. And Alvaro, welcome again to Latin American Directions. And today we're going to discuss, well, the very much eventful week that we had in Colombia public policy with the with the new government. Alvaro, welcome again. Hello, Nicolas. Thank you very much for your invitation. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here. So, Alvaro, just to provide a, a bit of context to the to the audience, let's tell them what happened this week in Colombia and public policy, right? So we held a series last month about all the effects from all the perspectives of the new government, a very different new government, and now we're waiting to see what they do, right? And at least from what I can count, there are four controversial issues happening this week. First, the condemnation letter that President Petro signed in the defense of Argentina's vice president, Cristina Fernandez, who's indicted and under investigation by the judiciary in the country. The second one, uh, the absence of the Colombian government from the Organization of American States meeting to condemn human rights abuses in Nicaragua. Uh, then the resumption of relationships with uh, Venezuela, which is the biggest change in public policy in, in foreign policy in the last five years. And finally, a declaration calling for negotiation in the in the war in Ukraine, basically equating both Russia uh, and Ukraine as if they were in peer position and, and not a an aggression, which has been the speech of of most of the Western world. So I would like your insight on this on this aspects. What do you think? Uh, what do you analyze from this eventful week, right? Yeah. Well, yes, as you said, it has been a very um, moved week regarding Colombia's international relations and international policy. Uh, I wanted to start by saying that uh, it's uh, obvious that with the change of, of the government in Colombia, there was going to be a different approach towards uh, international relations and international policy Colombia has um traditionally exercise however i consider that it's really really uh yeah to say sad to see the 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 current positions of the petros government towards international events around the world um first of all yes uh regarding the 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 condemnation letter towards the accusation of Argentina's Vice President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner. It is really, really, really um, um, sad and really warning for the democratic uh, people around Latin America that this kind of declaration has been produced. Why? Because it's the executive branch of Argentina um, messing around or uh, not respecting the division of power, the division of branch of government. And it is really, really unbelievable that a democratic elected president such as Gustavo Petro that has criticized abuse of power and that has criticized, um, um, yeah, the, the, the mixing of, 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 of the executive branch in the judicial independence in Colombia uh, backs this kind of declaration proposed by Argentina's president Alberto Fernandez. So it is a really, really bad president. It is really warning and it is re really worrying for, for democratic institutions around the continent that elected presidents, regardless or, or, or regardless of, of their political position of being left or, or right, are willing themselves to sign this kind of declarations where the executive threatens or or diminishes the authority. Or, or, or of the of the judicial branch in a democratic country. Right, and and what does this make us think about Petro's public policy and his role in the region? The the last time we spoke, we talked about the perhaps emergence of a new left, right? Of perhaps following the example of of of, of Gabriel Boric in in Chile, 
He has a former Inter-American Commissioner as, as Foreign Ministry. Human rights lies at the core of the, of the public policy, respect for, as you say, democracy, rule of law. Uh, and at least for me, this, this was shocking, right? It, it, it resembles uh, declarations from the old left in the region that, that I thought we, we were leaving behind uh, and that Petro was distancing himself from that. But I don't know what you think. Yes, uh, when Petro, when Petro uh, swore into office, well, I think I thought that he may be closer to Gabriel Boric, Chile's president position, towards rejecting that old left that uh, broke and disinstitutionalized Venezuela, for example. Uh, and and I, and I thought it was maybe Petro's intention to join that new left, that new democratic left that will respect rule of law, that will respect the limits of the constitution and the limits of democracy. However, with these movements, we've seen sadly that Gustavo Petro still uh, is, or, or, or he believes still in this anachronic left that shocked the continent the last decade and that left many, many institutional damages and institutional ruptures uh, throughout Latin America. So it's really sad to see this. It's really sad that Petro has not the political notion to separate himself from this anachronic and and um, useless uh, political uh, movement that, that 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 left that radical left that that shook the continent the last decade. Right, and, and now let's move to to analyzing the the absence from the OES meeting for because there was a lot of controversy around it. There was even the rumor that the. Uh, for previous government, the last administration didn't inform the new government of the meeting, and that that's why the the representative didn't attend until finally, I think yesterday or a couple of days ago, uh, the new foreign ministry minister said, "You know, no, it was our decision, and we did it because we were in bilateral negotiations with Nicaragua. Colombia's relationship with Nicaragua is a tense one because of the of the controversy over the property of of a couple of islands." Uh, so this one would seem to be more of a pragmatic decision from, from the government, but I don't know if the explanation is convincing for you, if you read it in the same terms of pragmatism, or if you consider it as well as an ideological, um, uh, action. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the pragmatism argument, I don't see it very clear. Uh, but but after but before I explain myself into that into that uh, point into that consideration, I wanted to say that Colombia has always um, had a tradition of being towards in, in international policy and international relations. It has always been towards supporting democracy, supporting Western values, supporting liberal ideas, and it, it's really sad to see. Uh, rupture, uh, uh, yeah, um, this institutionalization of that position Colombia has always defended with this new government. It is really sad to see uh, Colombian diplomats being forced to to get absent of important meetings in in the in the OAS, uh, in which the intention is to condemn dictatorships and to support Western values and to support. Uh, liberal and democratic values. I think uh, there's not a, like a, such a like a pragmatic decision. Uh, we have always taken actions, uh, diplomatic actions against Nicaragua's dictator, and we still have uh, um, a dispute with this country, uh, an international dispute towards land, towards sea. However, this hasn't stopped us to take action in the diplomatic scenarios that condemn the dictatorship and the censorship in Nicaragua. So I think it might be uh, ideological closeness with, with Petro and, and, and Ortega. And yeah, it is really sad and, and, I, and I really reject that position of the government. I think we, 
regardless of, 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 of the government's posi position, we have always to back democracies all around the world, all around the continent, and validating um, a dictatorship through silence is uh, is is really bad. But I I would say it's even coward to do it. Not it, it's not even taking a position of affirming or supporting the dictatorship, but it's validating it through silence. Right and. You move in, in, in your job, perhaps in international circles, you know, international actors. Uh, how is this being perceived uh, as far as you can tell by, by, by international actors? Well, there's certainly uh, uh, a shock. There's certainly a shock because Colombia has always uh, made an effort to support democracy. We, we even feel proud to... Uh, to be the, the oldest democracy in the continent. And this swift the new government is proposing is really disappointing. And it's really, um, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's really sanctionable. It, it needs to have a sanction in the international community or a rejection at, at least. And do you think that is gonna happen that is going to affect the long game of Colombia as a key player in the region, is is it going to affect its relationships with the U.S., for example, or do you think there's space to correct and and avoid consequences for this? Well, I think if Gustavo Petro wants to, which I think it was or still is, I don't know, his ambition to launch a, 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 a international uh, diplomatic strategy that launches Colombia. To another level, such as Lula did with Brazil, he of course need. This is going to affect that strategy, that intention to put Colombia in the map as an important player in the region, uh, that intention to make uh, of Colombia a more powerful voice in the in the international scenarios. That I think it's it's his intention. It's gonna this this kind of actions are gonna are gonna affect that that intention. Right. And now let's speak about the reestablishment of, of, of diplomatic relationships, of diplomatic relations with Venezuela, right? They were uh, interrupted since the whole uh, Duque government or very early in that government. And now very quick and very fast, uh, Petro moved on to the, re to the reestablishment of the relationships. What do you think about it? Why do you think this happened? And what are going to be the consequences, the pros and the cons? Well, I think, uh, first of all, to say that I, I consider it a mistake to cut relations with Venezuela. We are two countries that are highly integrated, that have a really, really large frontier, which are a really, really large piece of land. Uh, culturally, are, we are really involved economically. We were really, really, we had really strong ties. So I think that was a mistake that generated a huge crisis in in the border, in, in, in Colombian in Colombia border, uh, a, a crisis that includes security issues, poverty issues, uh, hunger issues, and that was a mistake. I think that it is a really um, important and right decision of this new government to reestablish relations with Venezuela because it's within the national interest to do so to start moving again the economy of, 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 of the border, to start moving again the economic relations and, uh, and um, yeah, in general, the relations of the two countries, because I mean, we have 1.8 million Venezuelans living in Colombia, and there is another, I don't know, like a million Colombians living in, in Venezuela. Uh, so it needs to be done. However, I consider the position of the government to stretch hands as if they were best friends with the dictator, it's wrong. You can have a relationship with establishing democratic limits and uh, and uh, letting letting it clear that this is within the the this is produced because there is is it is within the best interest of the country, but you cannot. If you if you praise yourself to be a democratic leader, stretch hands with a dictator that has killed his people and that has disinstitutionalized the country. 
So it is a right decision. However, the way it was done, uh, sending the ambassador, the receiving gift, stretching hands, giving hugs, it's wrong. It, says, it sends a wrong message to the Colombian people and to the international community. Right. Um, and with this decisions, how can we read it about the role that Colombia wants to play in the region under this new government? So it's clear that there's an interest to launch it to a next level, but that can mean many things, right? What do you think is what they understand for this or what you can read in these actions? Well, I, I, I see uh, three main objectives uh, in the Petros international agenda. I think those are going to be the three main points he's going to speak about in the UN's General Assembly in September. He actually has a really, really uh, important and big spot in that, in that um, meeting. He's going to speak the first day and he's the fifth speaker of the day. So that's a really huge thing to consider. And I think, uh, and I, I see it with good eyes, his agenda uh, that, that includes first, the war against drugs, the, the absurd of keep, keep going on this war and, and keep uh, killing people uh, in the name of a war that we already lost a lot uh, decades ago. And, and the, the necessity to reevaluate this paradigm and to establish a new focus of public health to the drugs issue. That's, that's one point. Second, the climate, climate action and climate justice uh, agenda. We are, of course, a country that is in the center of this discussion. And I think Gustavo Petro wants to take that discussion to the next level and become Colombia a critic and critical, uh, a critical and uh, um, an activist leader in this, in this, in this issue. And third, I will see that fight against poverty and hunger. The third um, point in his agenda, in his international agenda, that he's going to address in the United Nations General Assembly. Right. Right, and now let's take a look at our region. Brazil is gonna have elections in a couple of weeks, uh, almost a month. There's the possibility of, of, of Lula and his party coming back to government. And it's like we are seeing again a turn to the left in, in, in our region. How do you see this hints perhaps that Colombia is, is giving in terms of public policy because we know Lula uh, is a close friend of the government. We know that the government, of course, is close to the Argentinian government. Uh, and yeah, the, 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 they seem to be more close to this traditional, even 10 years ago, leaders. Is this a return to that? Or how do you see that the, the, the diplomatic uh, um, ambit and the foreign relations, international relationships aspect is going to change uh, in the near future? Yeah, well, of course, I, I, I think the, the victory of Lula in Brazil is practically imminent. He's going to be the next president of Brazil. Um, there's Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador in Mexico. We have Boric in Chile. Well, there's, a, there's of course, a shift towards a, a more leftist conception of, of, of what a government should be. Um, of course, with a new partner that, that is Colombia, that is the first time that is being ruled by a left government. That's a huge news in the continent. And I think that Colombia has a role, a big role to play, but we have also a risk that that role is not uh, executed under the respect for democratic values and that this role includes washing dictators' faces uh in the international scenarios right right and and how do you see the relationship with the u.s based on this initial steps that that they are that they are bringing and also recalling the fact that different to what happened with with president duque pedro got to speak uh with with uh high government officials very soon after or after his election yeah, actually. appointment President Biden, yeah, 
Yeah, I think relations with the, this democratic government, with President Biden's government, is going to be important, and it's going to be uh, one of a more horizontal, more e e equilibrated relation. Uh, however, well, we have an uncertain pan an uncertain future in U.S. politics. We don't know if the far right is going to take over the White House again. So. As long as the Democratic uh, um, the Democratic Party st party stays in the White House, which I see it not that possible, if you ask me, uh, I I think that the relations is, relation between Colombia and the U.S. is going to continue strengthening. They're going th there's going to be a shift in priorities. Climate change is going to be a priority. Uh, war against drug and the new perspective is going to be a priority. But as long as Gustavo Petro maintains a democratic, liberal, institutionalized position, I think we can uh, really get advantage of, of, of the relationship with the U.S. and this democratic government. Right. So I don't know if you have the same feeling, but listening to what you say and looking at the facts it seems like we are seeing like two different public policies right we have a public policy that is progressive that seems to be democratic that challenges the very basics basis of of public policy in in the region starting with what you say war on drugs uh approaches to poverty and so on even challenging uh what was the basis of, of our relationship with the u.s of course following the shift in policy by Biden, but then we have uh, more than explicit words, more gestures that hint into an anti-democratic uh, approach, or at least some sort of tacit approval of anti-democratic regimes just because they are leftist, right? And they seem to be progressive in their speeches. The question is, do you have the first the same feeling? And the other one, is this sustainable or how is it going to to unravel itself? Do you think Biden ha uh, Biden Petro has to decide or he's going to play on both sides of, uh, of, of the board? Uh, I don't know. But for me, it seems very complicated to play mean, both games at the same time. You mean having a good relationship with the U.S. and stretching hands with dictators? Exactly, and being progressive and upholding progressive values while stretching hands with their leftist friends in the region. Yeah, well, uh, well, regarding Venezuela, uh, the U.S. has also softened his posi its his position towards towards Maduro's government. We've seen now Chevron operating in Venezuela. Uh, the the oil exportations are going to be reestablished. So yeah, I think there's a little bit of double standards in that issue. And as long as there's money on the table, everyone is going to want to take it. And this is politics. You can um, maintain a speech against dictatorships and behind the table, you can still make business with them. So I think that's, gonna be, that's not going to be an issue as long as there's money and um, yeah. Uh, I mean, the the steps towards uh, reestablishing relations with Venezuela is necessary, but I don't want to see Petro becoming Maduro's best friend. That's my main concern. Right. Right. And and do you think this approach to Venezuela in the region, beyond the economic interest, has the possibility of pushing for changing the government, hinting to transformation? No, I don't think so. I visited Venezuela in December last year. And let me tell you, the dictatorship is um, as strong as ever. They have all the power. They have all the control of everything. The economy is moving and people have, have food on the table. They have money in their pocket. And Venezuelans are sick out and tired of politicians, of official of the uh, of the government and uh, the opposition and Venezuelans right now they just want to eat and work and make money and uh, of course this is a small part of the population there's a huge crisis in Venezuela and and there's a huge responsibility uh, of the dictator uh, and his and his allies 
but I don't think, I mean, in the near future, at least, there's going to be a change uh, in, in, in the Venezuelan government. The, the dictatorship is as strong as it has ever been. And, and that plus movie, money moving in the country, it's, a, it's a basically a, a wall that won't let Maduro fall. Right. Uh, and Alvaro, for your last remarks, uh, I consider that foreign policy is one of the of the key tests and areas where you measure the democratic and, and uh, progressive values of a government, right? More than any other aspect, because it's about uh, the d discourse you manage, right? I think what we saw in the last week was very concerning, and it raises, at least for me, red flags uh, regarding the, the new government and its promise of change. If you were able to give a piece of advice and he takes away for the government to prevent going down that path, what would you say? Regarding what? Excuse me, I didn't understand the question. Yeah, avoiding, avoiding. So you think this, this three or four things could be seen as three strikes, right? Like three very concerning declarations that show that this change of new left is not the reality that we might see or expect. Yes. And and thus we can follow the example of concerning left governments in the region. If you could give a piece of advice to the new government to prevent them going into that direction, what would you say? Well, basically to, to have in their mind that there are some values that Colombia has always defended, uh, the Western values, the democratic values, the liberal values, and that whether or not you are a left or a right or a centrist government, the project that Hugo Chavez embraced and represented failed. And people doesn't want that anymore in the region. That's why Boric uh, didn't, didn't support that. And that's the goal of this government, to become a new left as a, as a viable alternative of power. Right. Well, I think that's a great takeaway, Alvaro Salgado. Thank you so much. Thank you for your insight, and we'll see each other in two weeks. Goodbye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.